This episode is brought to you by the Polora Group. Welcome back to Winning Through Culture. I'm Tim Flanagan. And I'm Amanda Kramer. When culture's not a priority, people aren't a priority. Having an intentional focus helps you as a leader remain impactful and relevant as you move your business forward. Welcome to Winning Through Culture. Welcome back to another episode of Winning Through Culture, where we explore how leaders, business owners, and entrepreneurs can stay impactful and be relevant as they build and evolve healthy, sustainable cultures. I am here with my co-host, Amanda Kramer, today. If you've been listening along with us, we started creating episodes to focus on topics of interest to our listeners. And in the spirit of Women's History Month, I'm very excited to announce that our next series will be sharing the stories of remarkable women who are shaping the future of workplace culture. Over the course of the next four episodes, we will dive into the inspiring journeys of women who have navigated challenges, shattered glass ceilings, and cultivated thriving cultures within their teams and organizations. So for today's episode, Amanda and I are going to be talking about winning women those who have inspired us, and those who are driving positive change in the workplace and on teams. Welcome, Amanda. Thanks, Tim. And I think we can hop right into this. I think a great place to start is to talk about some of the women who have inspired you in your leadership journey. And I know that list is probably really, really long, (laughs) but maybe we'll narrow it down to just a, a couple or maybe three that you'd like to highlight as we reflect on the fact that it's March, we're starting March, And it's Women's History Month, but also that the female leader relationships that you've had have really helped kind of propel you, which I think could be relevant and impactful to some of our listeners out there. So let's start here. Do you have one female leader that you want to go ahead and share and we'll dig into it? That's a tough question because there's a few people that come to mind and then I'm sure there's others at the risk of missing them I don't want to do. I'm going to start with So I'm going with my gut here. Absolutely. It's what we would expect. I'm going to pick first and foremost, my mother. Excellent. And she never worked out of the home, but she did raise five crazy kids at home. And my dad worked a lot. So she was kind of the primary responsible party during the weekdays. And she taught me a lot from that experience. So I would give my mom a shout out. I came to Charlotte 20 years ago. Right. And I had the good fortune at that time of starting an advisory board of women business leaders in Charlotte. And the idea that I had there was to help as I was new to town. I wanted to see our organization both serve more women in the financial advising capacity. And I wanted to see our organization have more women advisors. Right. So I formed a board. There was a woman on that board, my chair, Sue Breckenridge, who has unfortunately passed away, but she was a great leader here in Charlotte. She introduced me to several other leaders in Charlotte and on that same journey. And again, I don't want to miss anyone because I met some amazing people, but uh, Ruth Samuelson was someone I met early in my journey. She was at one point in her career, financial advisor, and then later was actually a state representative in the state of North Carolina. And then in that same journey, I met Debbie Milhouse, who has been a guest on this podcast. And Debbie was very impactful to me as both a leader and a strong woman leader Right. in that sense. And I have since had the opportunity to work with a number of very strong women leaders, including you and some other women leaders in our organization. Yeah. So... I've had a pretty long, steady dose of inspiration in the last 20 years plus, specifically. And yeah, it's been an exciting part of my leadership journey because you can learn something from everyone, but to see, and I see this as a trend continuing in business, you know, there are more women in leadership roles and positions. There are more women business owners still kind of not proportionate to the population base, but moving in the right direction. So that's my uh, not so short answer. (laughs) It's a great answer though. And I'm sure I forgot some important people on the journey. 
Well, the cool thing in, is about this podcast is that we are doing a winning women series, right? Yes. So over the next four episodes, we're going to have collective stories and we'll be able to pepper in some of our experiences as well through having those dialogues with women who we feel are really winning in developing and almost mastering workplace culture, but regardless of industry, because you mentioned a couple of people, some in financial services, some not. We're also going to have some who will talk about their team experiences, whether that's on the field or maybe it is in a corporate environment. So we'll have more time to expand on that for certain. But you brought up a really good point about the leadership team that you have created and almost curated around yourself. I was actually having a conversation just the other day with somebody who was complimenting the uniqueness of the leadership team in our day-to-day life and the fact that it is primarily female. So over the course of time, it's been, you know, out of the six people that might be at that more strategic level, half or more have been female. So what led you to that path to build a leadership team like that? Because that is unique. It is uncommon, (laughs) as you mentioned. Yes, it is. So another impactful woman leader I know is Michelle Pedigo. She does some business consulting work with us as an organization and gives me feedback as a result of that. On a regular basis, on a regular in the best basis, way. <laughs> yes. And several years ago now, probably seven years ago, six, seven, eight years ago, mm-hmm. she challenged me to provide more opportunities, uh, again, for women financial advisors and women in leadership. So that was kind of the seed corn, if you will, that said, hey, why don't you look at this mm. as a possibility? And so at the time that she started to challenge me, there were, Audrey was one of the leaders in our organization, has continued to grow, and I had invested in her. And she was very invested in her growth over the time period from going back over a decade now. And so the intentionality of the challenge Michelle gave me and the experience I had was that and I'm trying to find the right way to say this. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff done right. in a relatively short period of time. And I think I am fortunate now to work with a number of strong women leaders, yourself included, that get along with each other. Yes. There are dynamics There's there dynamics. As, as any situation. Yes. Yeah, there are dynamics, dynamics at, play. at play. And so I've enjoyed watching... And again, part of this goes back to my comment on my mother. Mm -hmm. My mother used to think because she didn't work out of the house that, you know, maybe what she did wasn't as important. And honestly, that kind of pained me a little bit. It's like, no, mom, what you're doing here is work. Absolutely. (laughs) And it's important work. And, you know, and I have a daughter who I love dearly. And I just decided, you know what? I want to be a champion for women that want to be in business and, and be leaders and be impactful. And if I can be a champion, advocate, sponsor, I can kind of change, certainly in the financial services field where there are not many leaders, I can kind of change the trajectory of that and at least contribute in one way or another positively. And it's been a great journey because I've learned a lot. I am very blessed to work with some amazing women leaders, and I've really enjoyed watching them grow both in their confidence in their skills and their abilities and their impact. And it's just been rewarding, but it, you know, it does go all the way back to my mom. Yeah. Well, and you made a really good point. So your mom, that's the one, the job she had is the Mm -hmm. one job she would never, and I'm putting this in air quotes, clock out of. You don't ever stop being a mother. Like to this day, she is still your mother and she's still inspiring you. It might be in a different way as you've grown and evolved, but that's a really cool point to kind of bring it back to. So when you talk about the leaders that you have put around yourself and the ones that uh, maybe you've mentored or have mentored you in that women capacity, is there anything that you've seen evolve from the standpoint of putting so many female leaders in your network? Any initiative or growth that might have otherwise maybe not occurred? Because you mentioned about how we got a lot of stuff done very quickly and there's still a uh, dynamic at play that... Well, I mean, obviously in business, you got to get results. Right. (laughs) And part of getting results is executing and getting things done. I would say, though, that one of the dynamics of having so many women leaders 
in the organization, again, positive byproduct is not losing sight on the attentiveness to the people that work in the organization. Mm. And, you know, you could call it the soft stuff, which is, you know, in business, oh, you know, the soft skills, which I think are the hard skills. Mm -hmm. The finesse of caring. (laughs) Yeah, the finesse. I mean, the feminine energy that is more nurturing and caring than, you know. Well, and you need both. You do. You need male and female energy, right? And every person actually has both energy sources, right? So it's just aligning that in the dynamic that you are working in on a daily basis. And I think, again, as I, I was at a leadership development conference last week, and this topic came up, and interestingly enough, most of the attendees were women leaders. I'd say probably 70% yeah. of them were women leaders. And they certainly were very hungry for learning how to get better and be more impactful. Hmm. And so that focus, if you will, Amanda, with uh, care and concern for the people that are getting the work done is a great byproduct of having women leaders on your team. Yeah. Well, and even to the extent that we've worked to create specifically in our organization, again, we use our real life experiences, Mm -hmm. our real business experiences to talk about on this podcast, so much so that we instituted an Empowering Women series. So what are some of the ways in which you feel those that are listening could continue that empowerment of female leaders other than, again, surrounding yourself with them? as part of your board, or if you do have the opportunity on your leadership team to onboard or consider more female leaders, are there any other ways that you feel the empowerment of leaders and, again, making sure that they're able to then contribute to building a healthy, sustainable, impactful culture? Anything come to mind? Well, I mean, I I think you have to, from a, I use the word sponsor, sponsor meaning be willing to really help, in this case, a woman leader, be successful in their role by sharing what you know, putting them in situations to build their confidence and experience level, giving them opportunities to receive professional coaching and or growth and development around leadership. It's an intentional act. And again, I would also say, and it depends on the industry, in some industries, it's very common to have women leaders and others, it's not. Yeah, And usually in the industries where it's not, it's kind of a looked upon as, oh, you know, she's not capable. I remember those days. Yeah. Attitude. Yeah. And so being a sponsor is stepping into that space Mm -hmm. and saying, oh, no, that's not accurate. And that I think is super important. And again, it's that's the thing that's wild to me because I've, you know, I'm in one industry that doesn't have a lot of women leaders. And then I am surrounded by a lot of women leaders outside of this industry that this conversation is almost foreign. Like, why are you having it? Because <laughs> yeah. this is normal. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's not normal in every industry. And I think in those that it's not kind of the pioneering spaces, it's really adopting a sponsor's mindset and helping woman succeed without putting her in a situation where you're setting her up to fail either. Mm-hmm. So that's a balancing act. It definitely is. And I could remember, I can speak from my own experience of entering in from a leadership perspective and being the only female at the table, whether that's mm-hmm. a boardroom or whatever it might be. And understanding that dynamic, that's new too. You do have to manage the masculine and feminine energy that you as a self, as a human, you have both. And you have to ultimately put your energy where it needs to go and the dynamic that you're in, whether the room is completely the opposite sex of you or if it is a, just a different dynamic in general. So I can totally understand, depending on your industry, depending on your team, whatever you're a part of, there definitely is a consideration to think about as you're looking for advancement opportunities, not only as a female, but as any leader, right? So a lot of the stories that we're going to be showcasing over the next four episodes are really going to be applicable no matter what type of leader you are. We're just going to be showcasing some winning women that have been in our networks and that we really want to highlight as they have had some challenges to overcome and ultimately have had success in their chosen field or industry. Yeah. No, I'm looking forward to that because, again, I think those women can tell the story much better than I can. (laughs) But you were an advocate. And like, that's the one thing I always want people to know that 
I am. You talked a lot about being a sponsor in that yeah. way. And you have made a conscious effort to surround yourself with both female and male leaders. Mm-hmm. And the ability for us to have that experience has been, you know, paramount. I don't think that, you know, you can really lean into your advancement without having those situations where you're kind of jumping in the deep end. Yes. Yeah. That is and true. having that person that you know has your back. Like yeah. You need, well, you have trust. to, have, you have to have those yeah. people, right? It's all about trust. Trust. Yeah. And safety. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Tim, thank you so much for spending just a little bit of time with me as we set up these next four episodes in our Winning Women series as part of Winning Through Culture. And for our listeners, as we've referenced, we're really looking forward to sharing some dynamic female leaders and their stories with you over the next several months. And we hope that you will continue to listen along. Thank you very much for being with us. And thanks for listening to Winning Through Culture. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Winning Through Culture. Until next time, stay intentional, be impactful. Because your culture matters.